Hi, I'm Emily from the Keto Twins, and I have lost over 90 pounds on the ketogenic lifestyle. And on our channel, the Keto Twins, or Keto Twins, we talk about all things keto. So please subscribe. I would do um, a little cook with me or whatever, and uh, I'll be making a um, Chinese takeout inspired beef and broccoli. I was thinking that I really miss Chinese food, so I am going to be trying to make a beef and broccoli over cauli fried rice. Um, for dinner. A couple members from our group also sent us these cookies to try out. Um, so I'm going to be making the snickerdoodles one today. So thanks Chance and Kimberly for sending those to us. We really appreciate it. <laughs> Over the past month or so, I have definitely gained about 10 to 15 pounds. So I'm not happy about that. I weighed at like 187 today, which is crazy because a month and a half ago I was 170 pounds. I know a lot of that's water weight, but still, um, I'm planning on making a bunch of this stuff today, but tomorrow I'm planning on either doing um, one meal a day or completely fasting depending on how I'm feeling. I know a lot of you have also commented that you're not feeling motivated because of everything that's going on and I was reading a bunch of articles about it um, and that it's normal. Some people will go into this situation with the quarantine and everything like that. They go into it like really motivated to be productive and then they're not productive and other people, they um, turn out to be super productive in um, under lockdown. So I think that just varies um, person to person and I don't really think that we can predict how we're gonna react until something like this happens and since it hasn't happened before, no one really knew like how it was gonna turn out. Like I, I the first couple of days that I, th I thought I was gonna be super productive, actually, you'll see this the shelf. I um, ordered all the components online and I stained it and everything like that. Um, and this is probably the biggest project that I've done since being in quarantine. I'm actually proud of myself. I actually painted those pots too and uh, planted up those plants. Um, they're just like really cheap plants from Home Depot. And uh, I've been wanting to do it for a long time, but never got around to doing it. I've had my house for five years. I bought my house five years ago. So um, I'm proud of myself that I actually did it. <laughs> um, I'm planning on getting some new artwork in those frames as well. But yeah, I'm definitely not as productive or as motivated as I thought that I would be. I'm, I don't know if it's depressed, but um, just kind of feeling overall like just gray um, about this whole thing. And the, the trees, I'm looking at my window right now, the trees are starting to bud up and everything's gonna turn green soon. And it's just kind of like the uncertainty of not really knowing like what, what the summer is gonna be like, is everybody gonna be okay? And I don't know. I, I know that there's plenty of people that do not care about their diet right now and I I was like that for a couple weeks but now I really want to get back on because overall I feel so much better when I do strict keto when I'm not eating as much as I'm eating um, and you know I was starting to feel really really good about being 170 pounds and now I just feel bigger so um, yeah, tomorrow is a new day. Um, you'll probably be seeing this tomorrow. Um, but I'm excited for this upcoming week and this, this ne these next weeks um, where I'm going to try to turn this um, shelter in place around and be more productive than I was this past month and a half. I would say one of the best ways to stay motivated is to keep your food interesting on keto. And there's so many recipes out there now that there's really no excuse. You could probably find almost anything uh, keto-fied. Like the other day I was like, wow, I'm really um, jonesing for a chicken pot pie. And I didn't end up making it, but I just Googled it to see. And guess what? There is a recipe for chicken, a keto chicken pot pie, pie using fathead dough. So literally there's every recipe out there. You just have to go look. And since we all have so much time to be spending at home doing, you know, nothing, um, these are the times where you can make these extravagant recipes to keep your to keep yourself busy. I'm also uh, ordered like a needlepoint kit um, off of Amazon, and I thought you know it comes with a hoop and it's got like you know needlepoint. I've never done it before, and it was like twelve dollars or something. And I thought, hey, that's really pretty. I could like frame it afterwards. I don't know. I'm like trying to to keep occupied during this time. So making um, new recipes and uh, starting new hobbies like uh, that and um, DIYing stuff is what's gonna keep me busy and feeling good and feeling like I'm accomplishing something during this very weird time.
can we? Hello. Okay, I'm also wearing my hair in a bun today. <laughs> Uh, I got this thing called the Ponyo Bun Bar or something, and uh, this is the first time I've ever worn a bun in my hair, and it's interesting. I kind of feel like a genie or something. I don't know. It's I'm kind of getting used to it. So I'm um, this is like I'm trying to do more of a casual type of yeah with fake eyelashes and everything, but um, Henry's trying to rub himself on me right now. Henry. So first of all, I'm going to make these keto, oh, kiss my keto uh, snickerdoodle cookies. Kimberly and Chance from our group, Keto Chat Support and Motivation um, on Facebook, they sent us these to try out. So I'm excited to do that. So it doesn't seem like it's too hard to make. Um, all you need is the baking mix and egg, melted butter and vanilla extract. So that's what we're gonna do. I actually have, um, some of these Lily's milk chocolate chips. And I think I'm gonna add these in there. These are really, really good. Something else kind of cool came today, which is good and bad because uh, I want to start fasting tomorrow. And But we decided to buy an ice cream maker um, just because we're spending so much money on Rebel ice cream and um, all these other types of ice creams. And I figure it might be fun, a uh, fun kind of quarantine thing to make our own ice cream. So this was, I think, $39.99 on Amazon. You need to use ice and rock salt, which I don't have any rock salt, or actually ice, because our ice machine is broken in our refrigerator. So I'm gonna have to go get some of that. But this is gonna be fun to play with, hopefully sometime this week. So here are our ingredients. Um, we have one egg, four tablespoons of melted butter, um, some vanilla extract, um, and chocolate chips, even though the recipe does not call for chocolate chips, uh, the recipe does not, I mean, the box obviously does not say anything about chocolate chips, just I honestly don't want them in my house anymore because I'm going to be starting fasting hopefully tomorrow and I just can't have this stuff around. I am too weak. I am of weak mind to be having anything of temptation around. Um, so I don't want to like play with the ice cream maker yet. I don't want to have anything good that's going to tempt me because I need to get back on track. And the only way for me to do that is to get rid of all uh, temptation. And that means um, not having chocolate chips that are really, really good laying around the house. So I'm using them today. I mean, I don't even know if that really... Does that make sense? I, I don't know. Like, oh, just eat it today so you don't eat it tomorrow, whatever. tasted the the mix and it actually tastes really good. It does taste like a snickerdoodle, so I'm excited. Mm. Uh, okay, so already I feel like I have messed up because the package says 12 and yet I have six here and not that much left. So that's good. Hmm. Maybe I made, I made them too big, obviously. Oh well, these in. Um. It says here, bake them for 14 minutes. I put a couple of chips in some and not in the others. We'll see how they, how they do. 
have it at 325. My tripod has now gone from a tripod to a bipod to a one pod to a, we don't have anything left. I have to, <laughs> to get a new one. This is pathetic. These are the things that you can like make them stand up, but I obviously bought a cheap one. Ugh. A professional vlogger, I am not. Let's just put it that way. So now that we have um, the cookies in the oven, I'm gonna clean up this mess that I've made. Um, I have my meat defrosting for the, um, what am I making? Oh, uh, beef and broccoli. Here's the beef part. It is grass fed flat iron steak. It's defrosting. Are any of you aware that um, there's kind of like plant mania going on in this country right now? Maybe even the world? I um, have only been able to keep a couple of house plants alive and um, I started to get the plant bug, if you will. I got this plant from Aldi for $5 and I've um, kind of split it up and put it into a little pot. I can show it to you, but um, this is the leftover of that plant actually. I, I have other plants that I got from Home Depot for $3.99 that I put on a shelf in my room. A snake plant and like some kind of pepperoni plant. <laughs> And whatever. Anyway, those plants were $3.99 from Home Depot. So I thought, you know, there's so many beautiful plants. Like, um, maybe I can like up my plant game, right? And so I went down this like dark, dark path like of plant shopping online. And like, did you know that there's like plants um, that are selling for like seven or eight hundred dollars? Seriously, seven hundred dollars. I was looking up a plant shop in uh, in Chicago a couple miles from my house and they had this plant and I said oh that's pretty because it's kind of got it's got variegated white and like green and I'm like uh someone else asked on their Instagram post how much and they're like oh this is $750 I'm like and I was doubting playing like $599 for or $499 for a plant people are paying $750 for a plant it's crazy Anyway, so I've been looking up different, you know, variegated, cheaper plants for me to buy. This would be considered variegated, but this is not like the rare one. The Mon Monstera is like the one with the holes in it. Uh, they were like, oh, 10, 10 years ago, you could have bought this plant, or a couple years ago, you could have bought this plant for $10. And now, like the ones with the genetic mutation of having white parts on it, they're like $500. And anyway, I think I'll just stick, I'll just stick to my cheap uh, three ninety four ninety nine plants, three ninety nine plants for now. Also, I think I might have used like a oh my god, oh look, all that effort. I guess that's why you don't buy eyelashes for ten cents. You buy them for a little bit more. Honestly though, I never usually have a problem with these eyelashes. Whatever, oh, what's that? Oh, anyway, um, just ignore my eyelash. Don't look at it, stop looking at it. Um, I only used about two tablespoons of this, so uh, back into the pantry it goes, I guess. See, this is why I can't have it here. I'm gonna take those out. <laughs> Look at my uh, chip distribution needs work. Ew. Symmetry. Gotta love that equal <laughs> shapes and sizes. I am a terrible cook. I just realized this. This stuff. Um, this is Hazelnut coffee creamer. It says zero grams of sugar, 50 calories, three grams of protein. Great, it's really, really good. But this is another thing that I'm going to be cutting out tomorrow. I just can't, I can't eat the, I can't, I can't. I drink too much of it. It's like, oh yeah, just have one cup of coffee. I drink 20 cups of coffee a day. I'm not really, but you know, I'm having one right now. So I have to go back to just the basics, you know. I have not been using sweetener 
in my coffee for the last year either, but I started doing that. <laughs> that's another thing that's gonna go tomorrow. Tomorrow, I said tomorrow, not today, not right now. Mmm, I love hazelnut. <laughs> but like I said, this is why. This is why I can't have it. I don't know, I can't do moderation. It's gotta go. No more, starting tomorrow, no more. At least for a month. Let's just do a month of strict OMAD or fasting. Who's in? Anybody in? Is it just me? And Sarah, maybe? after I eat everything today, including tons more coffee, cookies that um, are cooling off right now that I haven't tried yet, beef and broccoli over cauliflower rice after I'm done eating all that. Tomorrow, fasting. Every cookie is a different size <laughs> and that's not the baker's, I mean the that's not the company's fault. This is my fault because, you know, I suck. But anyway, uh, it doesn't matter how it looks, really. I'm not selling these. So let's see how it tastes. Hmm. It's super soft. Definitely tastes like snickerdoodle. Haven't had this in a long time. Hmm. coffee. Oh. Mm, delicious. Honestly, it's not too sweet, which I actually like because I'm not used to eating that sweet of stuff anymore. So if it was too sweet, like too fake sweet, it would kind of bug me, but it tastes really good. Thank you, Chance and Kimberly for sending these to us. I have to stop eating them now. I'll have Brad try them. All right, here we have uh, the cauliflower rice. It's already, ooh. Move that all over. Add a little bit of oil. And we're gonna add half of an onion and half of a red bell pepper. And just let those cook while we get started on cooking up our meat. Here's our meat. I'm just gonna get uh, this started frying up. Just one minute on each side. We also have some broccoli that I have started uh, pre-steamed. So it should come together very fast. to be the um the sauce time i have all the ingredients here it's mainly soy sauce uh packed brown sugar um, this is the swerve brown sugar replacement smells like brown sugar i have um xanthan gum to, to thicken it um sesame oil and fish sauce just um a teaspoon of each um some rice wine vinegar um, some fresh grated ginger, some uh, grated uh, garlic, and some chili sauce. And that's gonna be what our sauce is made of. I'm gonna put this in the pan um, that I cooked the meat in, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Fried rice, that's starting to look almost done. Mix that all together. Soon I'm gonna add some soy into this. All right, soy sauce, packed brown swerve, sesame, fish oil, and all of the other stuff. I'm gonna mix this all together. 
have that combined. Add in a couple of tablespoons of soy sauce into there. This is going to be the xanthum, and I'm going to add, sprinkle this in, and then really quickly stir again. Xanthum gum is tricky like that. You gotta get it. You gotta stir it in right away. Going to put back in our meat, our broccoli that I have steamed and I'm going to try to coat the entirety of this with the sauce. So there we have our um, beef and broccoli keto-fied and I'm just going to grab a fork and try it. Can you see that? The sauce is nice and thick. It's uh, sweet, it's tangy, it's vinegary, and it's um, hitting the spot right now. Thank you for hanging out with me today um, and making the cookies and um, just chit-chatting. And um, hopefully this week, this upcoming week, will be a successful week for me because I need one, I need a win. And if you'd like to see my keto orange chicken recipe, click here. And we'll see you over there. Anyway, I'm Emily from the Keto Twins, signing out.